SDXL1 is out officially, it can do some straight up magic. Let's look at the facts. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? As you know, on my channel, you get no hype, no fuss. We drill right to the core. So we're going to look at the facts and I'm going to show you how to use an automatic 1111. And then we're going to activate hacker mode and have a taste of the forbidden fruit, showing you a way to use it in a way it should not be used. Let's get started. One of the most important things that you might be super happy about is the SDXL 1.0 version is for commercial use. It is licensed so you can use it and there shouldn't be any problems. Go out there, create and build your artistic empire, my friends. Then of course they made here some comparison of how good this is and they say this is conclusive that people prefer images generated by SDXL 1.0. Well, call me Bob and butter me sideways. Of course, this is what they are saying. It's their newest model. So I'm not quite sure how they generated these statistics. You can see here SDXL 1.0, the big graph here on the side, 26.2% of the people seem to prefer that over the previous models. And then for some reason, SD 1.5 down here, really stinking off. And SD 2.1, even less appreciated by the community. Now, one thing I don't really see here is any community models. We still have to see if this is going to be better out of the box. But of course, the community is going to train amazing models with their amazing godlike skills. Now this leads us directly to the next point. They say their SDXL model can be used with high quality in virtually any art style. And because of that is the best open model for photorealism. So this is a high focus here, but it also can create all kinds of other styles you want to create with that. Now one very important thing that they are pointing out here is that you can freely prompt for this model without the model putting its own feel onto your image. And that is a huge advantage because as you know, especially with all the different kind of civet AI models that are out there generated by the community, every model has a different feel, a different style, a different way it creates images, and they can't be easily interchanged to get the same result. So having a model that is not going to push its style onto what you want to create is really important for your artistic freedom and your expression for the images you want to create. Now let's have a quick look at the sample images that they are showing here. On the left side, we have a very nice example where it has a high dynamic range between the dark areas in the image and the brighter areas in the image. These lights that are not oversaturated, but still there's a lot of detail in the shadows. And also what they say is that their SDXL 1.0 model has a lot of color precision. And that of course is especially important if you want to create photorealistic results that actually look like real professional images. On the right side, we have another example that is specially selected to show the power of the new model. And that is that you have separate different characters. In this case, a dog in the foreground and a woman running in the background that are both rendered correctly. At the same time, you can see that the dog is in focus while the woman is in Boca. She is blurred in the background. So that is hard to achieve for AI, these kind of spatial dimensions and also relations between characters in these kind of compositions. And here the result is pretty good. We still have to see how much of this is cherry picked or how easy this actually is to create for the model. Here you can see two more examples. Again, they have the on the left side, high dynamic range in there. On the right side, a complex subject holding anything and having a correct hand in any kind of image is pretty difficult with AI. This result is pretty amazing, but also the way the dog is leaning into the hand and the precision of the anatomy of the body of the puppy is very good. Also in both images, you can see that the details are very nice and that the color precision also is good, especially of course in the right image with the photograph really looks like a professional photograph with some Lightroom editing on that. Now let's quickly talk about two other points before we look into automatic 1111. One of the points here is that this model can handle simple language better so that you don't have to write complex chiseled prompts to actually get something nice 
out of that. It doesn't need any invoke qualifiers anymore, for example, like masterpiece to give you high quality so that it understands more from the text that you input as what you actually want to have as an output at the image. It is, of course, better to have a model that is closer to how we express our ideas and our wishes to the AI. And another thing they point out down here is that it is going to be apparently a lot easier to train models and LoRa's with the SDXL model. They say it needs a lot less data wrangling so that you can get to better results in a faster way with less effort. I would be absolutely happy about that because training your own models, training your own LoRa's is very important for your own artistic artistic expressions. And of course, what they also point out here is that SDXL 1.0 works better, gets you better results, for example, from methods like ControlNet, where you have open pose, you have segmentation, you have different depth maps and soft maps. So this is also a huge improvement if this can really get you much better, more accurate results. At the end of the page, they also point out you can use this right now in various different ways. So you can use it on their ClipDrop website with this link. You can also use it on your own computer. I'm going to show you in a second how to do that. It's super easy. They have, of course, their SDXL Stability AI platform that you can use with an API. You can use it on the Amazon services, which is really interesting and probably more interesting for business use. Then we also have here the use in inside of the stable foundation discord where you can use it in testing rooms to check it out on their discord servers and on their dream studio website is also available. Surprisingly, one thing they don't really point out too much in their announcement is that SDXL is supposed to be very good with text, as you can see here in this example. Now you can certainly read the text SDXL. There is a little bit of a bend here on the lower part of the D so that could be a little bit better, but still it is very nice. Supposedly SDXL is also good with creating different focus points at the same time, which I'm not sure. I haven't seen too many examples of that. In this case, the face of the guy is in focus, but the text is not in focus. Instead, the ship behind him and the arm is in focus, but that is only focus range, which is not different focus points. So I have to see more about that. Also, Nerdy Rodent has checked out SDXL already. He has created this amazing image in a pixel style. Really love it. Also, of course, he has a SDXL video on his channel. Maybe check that out too. And then we have here the user Orkton. He has used mid journey prompts in SDXL 1.0. You can see here the results that have been created with Stable Diffusion. And I would say they look amazing. They look a lot like what you would expect from mid journey. Very high detailed. He gets a lot of beautiful results results, very nice compositions, a lot of dynamic in these images too. And as you can see, again, it is very good with photorealistic results. Now here we can see the mid journey results in a different order. So you can compare them. And this I would say still mid journey is better. In these results, they look nicer from the quality. But of course, you have to take into consideration that you don't get all of the control, all of the precision, all of the methods that Stable Diffusion is offering. So even if these results with Mid Journey look more amazing out of the box, you still can do less with them by preparing the process. So that is a downside. All right, my friends, it is finally time to look at Automatic 11.11. And the first thing we need, of course, to do is to download the model. So I have two links for you below the video. One of them is for the base model, but also for an offset LoRa that improves the image quality. So you need to download both of them. Of course, the SDXL base model goes into your automatic 1111 folder in there into the models folder and in there into the stable diffusion folder, as does the refiner model that we are going to look at in a second. And of course, then the SD XL offset LoRa is going to go into the models folder and in there into the 
LoRa folder, not into the stable diffusion folder. And of course, at the second link, you have here your SDXL refiner model that you absolutely need to have. So download both of them. It is super important. And now we're already off to automatic 1111. Now the really, really important thing here is that you have your automatic 1111 updated to 1.5.1. And of course, if you have followed my install instructions from the past that show you how to get automatic updates with git pull the only thing you need for updating is to open up your web ui minus user dot bat file for this i'm using notepad plus plus it's free to download and in there you want to simply put the command git pull save it close it and then double click on the bat file and it will start the update for you. Now we are inside of automatic 1111 and the usage of this is actually super simple. So first of all, in the stable diffusion checkpoint, you want to select the SDXL base model. You want to have clip skip at one. If you don't have that slider, it's automatically at one. And you want to set the SDVAE to automatic and not to 840,000 as you often use with SD 1.5. If you don't have that, chooser up here it is usually at automatic so don't worry about that then you can use your old prompts down here or you can use new ones now one thing that is important here is as far as i've tested it does not work with loras from sd 1.5 and you also shouldn't use the negative embeddings down here in the negative prompt for your settings down here, you can choose everything as you want to. But of course, the smallest resolution has to be 1024 by 1024. You can use face restore, but maybe avoid high res fix. I would also suggest to you to turn off everything down here, like a detailer, animate diff, control net, root at the start for testing this. So you don't get any errors when using that. Additionally, you want to use the offset LoRa. It's not a must, but you can get better results with that offset LoRa. So on the right side here, you have this pink button. Click on that. Then you go into your LoRa tab. So with this, you want to look for your SDXL offset example LoRa. You click on this. And they will automatically add it to the end of your prompt. Now here you want to set the weight rather low. So I would suggest to go with a value of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then experiment with other weights here for the offset LoRa. After you've rendered the image in here, you get a pretty nice result, but it's a little bit soft and it's a little bit low detail. So next to use the refiner, you need to send it to image to image. For that, you have this button down here, click on it. And then you need to do two things that are very important. First of all, here for the checkpoint chooser, you need to choose the refine model now. Then it is also very important that you delete the LoRa out of your prompt because this will give you an error message, at least in in my case, it was like that. Next, of course, for your settings, make sure that you have, again, the size set to 1024 by 1024. You want to use a low denoise strength. So you can really go very low with the denoise setting here. Experiment with that to see what is good for your results. Again, you can use restore face if you want to test it out, if you see if you get better results. And then simply hit the generate button and wait for it to finish. So now it's time to look at some examples here. This is the base model render. 1024 by 1024 samplers Euler A. I'm using 20 steps with a CFG of 7 and the offset LoRa of 0 0.3. This is the result that I'm getting with a prompt, a negative prompt that is actually for realistic vision, but I would say the result is pretty nice. Now, this is the base model render without the offset LoRa. I would also say that the result is pretty good, and you can also see that even with the same C you get a different result. So you might want to experiment if you want or not want the LoRa and what kind of weight you want to use with that. Another thing that you might experience is to get results like this or error messages. Now, what that means is that probably you're going to use the wrong VAE. So again, set the VAE to automatic. You also don't want to use any extensions like ControlNet below or any kind of LoRa's in your prompt other 
other than the offset LoRa for SDXL. Now, the next thing is when you have rendered your base image and you send it to image to image, you might get this error here about size of tensor. This happens because you have not removed the LoRa from the prompt before running the refiner model. They seem to not like each other. And then here we have the refiner result. This is using a denoise value of 0.1 and I'm using face restore in image to image. Now here you have a comparison between the base image and the refiner image and you can see that it's adding a lot more details and making the image more crisp even at that very low denoise value. Here we have the same settings but in this case I'm not using face restore and in this comparison that is zoomed in for a close up you can see on the left side that the face and especially the eyes are a little bit nicer with face restore but maybe also a little bit softer while with no face restore the face looks a little bit sharper and crisper but the eyes have problems in them especially with the iris and they also have some color problems in them where they have these kind of decolored or miscolored edges. Now let's look at two different denoise settings. With 0.1 I get a really nice result that I like a lot. With 0.2 I get a result that has even sharper details especially when we look down at the clothing but at the same time I feel like it has too high contrast but this might very well be depend on the image that you are generating but also on the prompt you're using to generate the image. And now my friends we're gonna activate the hacker mode. It's danger zone you should not enter this area because this is up using the refiner model but I'm just going for it. So because I'm kind of sick of changing forward and backward between the base model and the refiner model, I thought why not just use the refiner model. Now the thing is if you use it at 1024 by 1024, you get an error with a double image in there and Hi-Risk Fix seems not to be able to fix that. So my thought was let's use a lower resolution and check out what we get from that. So I found that with a value of 680 by 680 I get a very nice result where the anatomy and the color and the composition of the image is nice. The other settings are the same. And now I go to image to image. I set it to 1024 by 1024 denoise at 0.2 and I think that you could see that this is kind of amazing and it looks really good without even having to change the model. So even if this is the forbidden fruit you might want to still try it. So that's it my friends. Let me know in the comments if the new model is as tasty as a fresh kebab or if you need some Pepsi to wash it down with. Thanks for watching. Leave a subscribe if you enjoy videos like this and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.